Greetings, family. So wonderful to have you here again. And we are now in the midst of the foundational Friday experience on the Enlightenment and Transformation channel. I am Yuya Asan Anu, your host. And in this session, we'll be picking up where we left off with our Yoruba Patakis. Uh, I got a lot of emails on that last session and a lot of people appreciated uh, the direction it took and the information that was presented. And I'm very grateful that I was able to bring something of value to your spiritual learning experience. For those of you who are interested in taking classes, you can head over to the Sadulu House, and that's S A D U L U H O U S E dot com. The Sadulu House is my spiritual institute where I direct and teach classes out of and provide also other services that are related to spiritual work and spiritual learning and understanding. Also, for those of you who are desiring, I've gotten emails about the Arisha mixtapes. You can go over to arishareligion.com and pick up your free copy. That's O-R-I-S-H-A-R-E-L-I-G-I-O-N.com, arishareligion.com. And there you can also get more information. There's articles there as well and posts on various Arisha energies. And you can also get the archives of uh, our previous episodes and shows. So for this session, what we'll be dealing with is the song Respiration. This is a song that was performed by Common Talib Kweli and Most Deaf. And this is a song that uh, really encapsulated the whole idea of animating an inorganic object or animating an inorganic experience or concept. And in that, what they did was they took the cities of New York and Chicago and they made them breathing, living organisms. So it's a very beautiful um piece of work that they've established and put together and it's a song that you can really go a lot of different directions in attempting to decode and decrypt it and they really uh, made it a multi-layered experience also for those of you uh, who are looking to take classes you can go also straight to the Udemy platform right now there's a sale uh, leading up to Black Friday which is uh will be, I guess, today when this is broadcasted. To check that out, you can just go to udemy.com forward slash A-N-U hyphen P-R-I-E-S-T-H-O-O-D. Okay, that's udemy.com forward slash Ainu hyphen priesthood and the number one. So that's U-D-E-M-Y dot com forward slash A-N-U hyphen P-R-I-E-S-T-H-O-O-D and the number one. And that's where you can go and uh, sign up for the classes and become a student. We will be having a live broadcast uh, momentarily uh, as far as our video. Udemy is currently undergoing some technical issues and it was supposed to actually have been repaired last week and uh it wasn't so again like i said if if it comes down to it we'll just go over to the ustream platform so i'm going to give them a couple of more days and if i don't uh get a satisfactory uh answer in terms of them getting that back up and running then we'll just head over to Ustream which is fine because I like I said before I'm thinking about doing a a Ustream show anyway maybe once every two weeks I'm I'm sorry yeah yeah, like once every two weeks so twice a month and uh, you know let me know what you think about that send an email or put a post on a Facebook group and you know uh, let's talk about that because uh, it would be another opportunity another way for me to connect with you all but also to explore some other concepts that are related to spirituality and spiritual learning. One of the other things that I'm deeply passionate about is uh, reestablishing, reaffirming, and sustaining family within our community. Family is a high spiritual science that we all too often look over and skip over in order to gain a level of spiritual knowing and strength and and supremacy but the reality is your greatest supremacy comes through your ability to connect through family in a balanced way and uh my book you know solutions for dysfunctional family relationships 
really gets into that. It gets into establishing a more functional, insane paradigm, not just a normal paradigm, because nowadays what is normal is actually dysfunctional. So we're really looking to establish a more balanced and footed and rooted family experience. And in that, we now have the ability to springboard into our greatest selves, which brings us right back to our spiritual learning and our spiritual understanding. So without further ado, what I first want to do is play the song Respiration for you all. And then we're going to decode it and I'm going to compare it with how we also decode our Yoruba Patakis. So here we go. Okay, that was Respiration with Most Def, Talib Kweli, featuring Common. Now again, similar to the Yoruba Pataki, as we went over in our last session, the first thing that you should have noticed, or hopefully noticed, is that the intro lines or skit to that particular song set us up for the concept that was going to be presented throughout the project. If you noticed, there was the piece from the movie uh, Star Wars, I believe that was, where we hear uh, Dez and, and Main 3. Uh, and I forget the other artist's name, but I know Dez is DJ K Slay. But he says, um, what did you do last night? And he said, we did two whole cars. He said it was me, Dez, and Main 3, right? And he said, yeah, the first car in small letters. And it said, all you see is, and in big block silver letters, is crime in the city. He said it took up the whole car. Yeah, the whole car. So there was our setup. So what you'll see now is when he said it was in big block silver letters. Well, silver, anytime we're dealing with the element of silver, we're dealing with the moon. Anytime we're dealing with the element of gold, we're dealing with the sun, okay? And iron usually associates us with the earth. So he said in silver letters, all you see is crime in the city. Well, the moon is the maternal aspect. And all we're seeing now is crime uh, from the place that's supposed to nurture us and feed us. Then you hear the the Latino woman saying, Escúchala la ciudad respirando. Okay, and um, Escúchala la ciudad respirando means, uh, listen to it, the city is breathing. And she says that several times. So now we have this female energy that breathes on the track and, and animates the city. She says, listen, listen to it. The city is breathing. Listen to it. The city is breathing. They're letting us know from the very beginning that the city is a living and breathing organism. But if you notice that first line when it said is all you see is crime in the city, that actually was the solution. So just like when you read a traditional Yoruba pataki or folklore phrase, they always give you the solution first. So they may say something like um, Ogun blesses those who keeps their word is the one who divined for turtle. <laughs> You'll read something like that and it seems so cryptic. Like, what are they saying? But what they're actually giving you is the solution in the first line. OK, Ogun blesses those who keeps their word. So this story is going to be about someone who broke their word. And when turtle went to go get divination because a lot of times they'll use animals to explain things this is what was told to them okay and then you get the explanation of why you should keep your word so here we have all you see is crime in the city and then the rest of the song tells us why all we see is crime in the city and we get our first entrance where it's decoded for us when the woman says, Escucha la la ciudad respirando, saying, The city is breathing, the city is awake. Most Def then comes in and says, The new moon rode high in the crown of the metropolis, shining like who on top of this? So, again, we have the reference to the moon, obviously, is bringing us to the, to the nighttime, but the moon saying, Who's on top of this? It's a, it's a question of really, are you paying attention to what's going on? Because he also says people was hustling, arguing and bustling. Gangsters of Gotham, hardcore hustling. 
Okay, so he's saying nobody's really paying attention to the fact that the moon is shining high. The moon is on the top of the metropolis because what's really moving and running things is this nightlife that he's now painted a picture of. And he said, I'm wrestling with words and ideas. My ears prick seeing, seeking what will transmit. The scribes can apply to transcript. So right there, he tells us he's he's a sesh or he's a scribe. He gave us the information right there. So, again, I always tell you when you're looking for these incarnations of these deities, you got to stop looking in the clouds for people to come down in robes and on horses and elephants and all stuff like that. What they're coming as are these entertainers and these celebrities or what we also call in the entertainment industry luminaries. Now, luminary is an uh, enlightened one, one who has like an Illuminati, one who is illuminated, one who has the light, one who has knowledge, one who's enlightened. So the, the illuminary, most deaf, gives us that line. He said, I'm looking for what I can transmit to you. He said, the scribe can transcript. Well, that's a trans transcription is, you know, when you transcribe something that's going on, usually audibly. And you put it into a uh, written word. So he tells us now that the rappers are scribes. Now, here's the other reference to tell us that the city is alive and it's taking on its own character. When he says, uh, this ain't no time where the usual is suitable. Tonight's alive. Let's describe the ins inscrutable, the indisputable. We New York, the narcotic strength in metal and fiber optics where mercenaries is paid to trade hot stock tips. See, he starts to tell you now the city is alive and these are the type of children at the city births. Now, I can't go through um, every piece of the song because we would we would actually run out of time. But there's certain key lines that he that he says that gives you again explanation of what that first all I see is crime in the city was about when he says uh, for instance the cost of living is preposterous stay alive you play or die no options no Batman and Robin what do I always tell you nothing's gonna come out of the sky and save you you have to do it for yourself he says can't tell between the cops and the robbers they're both partners they're all heartless with no conscious back streets stay darkened with the unbeliever hearts stay hardened unbeliever means what means that i'm locked in triple stage darkness we went into this in the uh, olo Kun show i'm an unbeliever because i can't see the truth i can't hear the truth and i can't understand the truth so therefore the streets stay darkened the back streets stay darkened and my heart stays hardened from any thoughts of uh hope or removing myself out of this situation. One one line he also says that lets us know um, the character when he says, you either wake up, make a way or you stay sobbing. The shiny apple is bruised, but sweet. And if you choose to eat, you could lose your teeth. So again, he gives us an idea of the type of character and energy that now comes from what we were supposed to be getting nurtured by because he now he he likens the city to an apple, but it's an apple that's sweet. But if you bite into this apple, you're going to lose your teeth. So that's just one for most deaths. Now we, we go on to um, Talib Kweli. OK, here he starts us with breathing in deep city breaths sitting on steps we stoop to new lows hell froze the night the city slept okay now hell froze the night the city slept because again we're dealing with that triple stage darkness now you see again we're dealing with the element of freezing being frozen in your ways and actions okay he says the beasts crept through concrete jungles communicating with one another he's obviously speaking about police officers communicating with one another now another key line is where he says the beast walk the beats but the beats we be making you on the wrong side of the track looking visibly shaken taken from plungers plunging to death that's painted by numbers with crime unapplied pressure cats is playing god but having children by a lesser baby mother but effort we played against each other like puppets 
swearing you got pulled when the only pull you got is the wool over your eyes. Getting knowledge in jail like a blessing in disguise. See, now that's key. What he's telling telling us here is when he says the beast walk the beats, he's talking about the police walk the beats because the cops walk a beat. But the beats that the, the people in the city make have them looking visibly shaken. So you have cops walking through these neighborhoods, but they're, they're obviously scared. So what they do, because they're on the wrong side of the track, because they don't actually live there, he said, taken from plungers, plunge into death that's painted by numbers. He's obviously talking about the Abner the Wiener case, where um, a young man was raped by a group of uh, New York City police officers with a bathroom, a toilet plunger. So now where he says that with crime unapplied pressure, cats is playing God, but having children by a lesser baby mother, but effort, we played against each other like puppets, swearing you got pulled when the only pull you got is the wool over your eyes. So now what he's saying here is that there's a whole paradox that's occurring within this city environment and you're really being played like a puppet. So it's like it's a manufactured artificial reality Whereas you're actually thinking you're making certain moves and you're doing certain things. But even those who have been put there to police the area, they are in danger because they're visibly shaken. And even those who are residents there, they're also being fooled. So no one is actually in a position of power who exists within that environment. But they have certain measures and certain things that are going on to make them feel like. Now, this goes back again to our first line that all you see is crime in the city. It's all criminal. So he also says getting knowledge in jail like a blessing in disguise. Look in the skies for God. What you see besides the smog is broken dreams flying away on the wings of the obscene. OK, so now what he's saying and he said those are thoughts, the obscene thoughts that people put in the air, places where you get could get murdered over a glare. He's saying that we all live in this environment where when you look in the sky, instead of seeing that hope again, we, we, we're getting the picture here of hell because all you see is crime in the city. So when I look up where I should be seeing, seeing the light of the sun, which, of course, would be the light of God or the light of Olodumare or Olorun, all I'm seeing is people's dreams going up in smoke so I can look around me and see the despair and see the broken dreams flying away like he said the broken dreams flying away on the wings of the obscene another line that he says is key said it's a paradox that we call reality so keeping it real will make you a casualty of abnormal normality so now what he's saying is that what is the norm here is actually an obscene reality so you keeping it real and or you aligning yourself with this reality will actually get you killed so in order to stay alive within this paradox or this reality that they call city life you actually have to become abnormal you have to go against the grain because going with the grain and being normal will actually, like he said, get you capped like an NBA salary. Salary Now, for those who don't know, capped means shot or killed. OK, so I'm going to go on to Common's piece. And there's a lot more here, but I'm, I have to just go surface uh, in order for us to get through it. But there's a key line I just want to mention where he says New York life type trife the Roman Empire state. He compares New York with Rome or more so the U.S. with Rome and New York being the Empire State. Very key line. Again, all I see is crime in the city. All right. Now going on to and there's a hook in between that most Def says where he says so much on my mind. I just can't recline blasting holes in the night till she bleeds sunshine. Breathe in inhale vapors from the bright stars that shine. Breathe out. Weed smoke retrace the skyline. You don't the bass ride out like an ancient mating call. I can't take it. y'all. I can feel the city breathing chest heaving against the flesh of the evening. Sigh before we die like the last train leaving. OK, another key line, but um, I'm actually going to go straight to comments. So now comments starts us off with a picture of a young man 
obviously himself he's speaking about who's actually made it out of that environment so he says yo on the amen corner i stood looking at my former hood the amen corner obviously he's talking about on the church corner or just the place where we gather where we where we congregate maybe shoot dice drink that's the amen corner i stood looking at my former hood where i used to live he says i felt the spirit in the wind and knew my friend was gone for good through dirt on the casket the hurt i couldn't mask it when he's saying my friend was gone for good he's actually speaking about his neighborhood and that reality or that stance that he had when he lived there so he threw dirt on a casket the hurt he couldn't mask it because he knows that that reality is gone so he says mixing down emotions struggle i had it mastered i choreographed seven steps to heaven so what he's saying is that while i was living here i couldn't really get on top of this hood life i couldn't really master the struggle of what this represented so i got myself out that's the choreograph of seven steps to heaven because remember all i see is crime in the city we got to go back to the first line so if all i see is crime in the city not only is that a hell reality but there's nothing else here for me now here's another key line that he gave us so some days i take the bus home just to touch home from the crib i spend months gone so when he says so some days i take the bus home just to t touch home he's saying now that i'm a celebrity i'm a star sometimes i get on the bus in order to feel like a one of the regular people you know to be with the layman again so i get on the bus just to touch home or more so just to be grounded again and when he says from the crib i spend months gone he's speaking about being on tour so i'm gonna kind of skip ahead and in, in his piece and he, he just really speaks about being torn where he says some of this land i must own out of the city they want us going tearing down the jacks creating plush home the jacks of the projects he's saying i have to own some of this because they're pushing us out of the city and we have really nowhere to go so he says my circumstances being is between cabrini and love jones so cabrini is the projects so between the projects and this new bougie reality but i I really have no home either way he said i'm surrounded by hate but yet i love home so that crime in the city or that hostile hell environment that we're speaking about though it's hellish and though it's horrible but for him it's the only home that he really knows then he says i asked my guy how he thought traveling the world sounds his friend said i've never been past downtown and that's where he ends and says it's deep i heard the city breathes in its sleep again another reference to the animation of the city uh, a reality i touch but for me it's hard to keep so he's saying i can understand that the city is alive but i really can't own that i can't keep that reality within my mind because it's such a hellish environment but really all i see is people being closed down and shut down further and further. Because the next line he says, is deep, I heard my man breathe in his sleep, a reality I touch, but for me, it's hard to keep. So he's even saying, when he's saying breathe in his sleep now, he says my man breathes in his sleep. He's saying, my friend is basically like a walking zombie. And he's saying, I can understand that reality, but I can't own that because these people, I need to wake up. All of this was an explanation of that initial skit and in between we're still hearing escucha la la ciudad respirando so we're still hearing that line listen to it the city breathes for those residents who are stuck in this reality they don't really have the wherewithal to realize you're within a living breathing organism that is set forth and designed to destroy you but you can't really see it so that's why common's last line was so so key where he's saying you have to get out of this world he said it's a dog eat dog world you gotta mush on some of this land i must own so he's saying you know you have to move further you have to get out of this reality or you'll become a walking zombie. You'll be one that breathes in your sleep. So one of the last lines that we end up with uh, most deaf is he says, I can't take it, y'all. I can feel the city breathing, chest heaving against the flesh of the evening. Kiss the eyes goodbye. I'm on the last train leaving. So when he says kiss the eyes goodbye, obviously it's a double entendre. He's speaking about not only St. Ides, he's talking about liquor. I'm done with that. But he's also talking about the eyes is 
is a time of the month, usually the 15th on some months and the 13th on other months. Now we know for anyone who's familiar with inner city reality, the first and the 15th is when the checks come in. So when he's saying the 15th or kiss the Ides goodbye, I'm on the last train leaving, that reality, even of that celeb celebration on the f first and 15th, and for those of you who know, on the first 15th, that's when, you know, everything happens, things are bought, you go to the number spot, you get your hair cut, because that's when the subsidy checks come in. And he's saying, I'm leaving that. Again, I really only just touched upon some of the surface because it goes so much deeper with this particular one. And what I implore my students to do and all my listeners is to actually listen to this song yourself and break it down. Go as deep as you possibly can into it because there's other lines that are left out because, you know, we only have a short period of time. And then use the same formula. The first phrase gives you the actual solution. So you're working pretty much from the back end, from the equation, and then going back to the, uh, you know, the components that, that go into that equation. So you kind of work backwards when you read Yoruba Patakis. And this song was designed in the same way as a Pataki, where we get the solution first. The solution in reality is all you're going to see is crime in the city because the silver is written in silver letters across the entire train meaning that any vehicle of travel within the city any place where you think that you can be upwardly mobile is really only a lateral movement because across the entire train is a graffiti writing or a scribe that says all you're going to see is crime in the city you're not going to see anything else until you mush on as common says and get out of the city so we have the solution there, but we get the explanation later. Now, what your job to do as a priest or priestess is to now figure out the solution based on what you read in the coding. And that's how you also have to read the Patakis. We're going to get into that again because <laughs> we're going to have to go beyond a part two. But um, I'm going to teach you even further. And this is a light way of how you can decode and then start to prescribe remedy based on what you're reading in the folklore, because everything that's being presented to you is for you to provide remedy. And the new music that's being given to you is the same exact thing. I don't want you to separate it from the anxious. Just because you may have heard a drum like like most deaf said, doesn't the bass ride out like an ancient mating song? Pay attention to what he's saying. You got to realize these are incarnated deities in Orisha rapping these songs and singing these songs. When he says, "Don't," doesn't the bass ride out like an ancient mating song? He's saying, listen to the beat and everything is just as ancient as what you're searching and looking for when you go into drum class and learning these old Ariki songs and everything. This this is the new Ariki and it's just as ancient. It's just we, we've updated. Instead of saying this was written across uh, a temple wall, all you see is crime. We put it across a subway car. OK. Or, you know, uh, Talib Kweli saying we, we stoop to new lows sitting on city steps. You know, we could say that or we could say, OK, now that the invaders have come and we sit on this log under the tree, we've never found ourselves in this position. It's the same thing. OK, so we're going to get into the next one. And again, for those of you who are looking to take classes, check me out at SuduluHouse.com and you can go straight over to or the, the Udemy platform, which is Udemy.com forward slash Anu hyphen priesthood one. And you can also take my free course there, Unleash Your Power. But, uh, you know, just look me up on the Udemy. It's Udemy.com forward slash U forward slash H-R-U-Y-U-Y-A-A-S-S-A-A-N. OK, and you can just check out my profile and, and take a class or again, just head over to Sudul House and you can get all the information you need. Pick up that new Arisha mixtape, pick up uh, Grasping the Root of Divine Power on Amazon, as well as Solutions for Dysfunctional Family Relationships. And uh, pick up the, the music I've also put out through the Metaphysic Music, uh, Know You, as well as Mother's Rising Sons. All of that stuff feeds into your spiritual growth and your development. And that is our session for today. And I will see you in another seven days. All right. Hotep.